without anything further, we're going to call up our speaker for tonight. Peter Kumar has been a dear friend of mine over this past year, and we've had many meals together. Come on up, Peter. And he is a man of God. I know he's a prophet of the Lord, and he speaks prophetically into the body of Christ, but also into people's lives individually. He has a powerful healing gift and uh, has a tremendous amount of wisdom for activating the purposes of God. Uh, the night is called Possessing Your Harvest because that's what this man's all about. He's all about uh, saying, let's get off the seats and into action. So bless you, man of God. We love you. Just give him a hand, would you please? Amen. Church, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. My Indian friend is here. Thank you. Well, for people who are seeing me for the first time, my name is Peter Kumar, being connected to this church, connected to the people here. So if you haven't met us, please come and say hello to us. Amen. Yes, I have a ministry. It's called the Forerunners Nation Changers. Uh, I've been walking with Jesus for nearly 39 years. Started off taking Sunday school, youth fellowship, worship. But then the Lord told me to move from India to New Zealand. And he said, I want you to raise Elijah's. I want you to raise Elijah's. Now, who is an Elijah? A man who could challenge kings. A man who could challenge queens. A man who had access in high places. Church, listen to me. Today, the church needs to have access. If the church does not have access, the church will never have acceptance. Please listen to me. There are at least about 3,000 churches in North Carolina. One day, Jesus asked me, if I visit again, which church should I go first? Which church should I go first? I said, why are you asking me? He said, the churches are doing their own thing. They are doing their own thing. Please. I used to go to a church a few years back, and the pastor used to always tell me, you're using the same scriptures which I've preached many times. But every time you use the same scripture, it's very different. And you're challenging me. How many of you know it's very difficult to challenge pastors? I mean, I'm not expecting to do that. But then he told me, Peter Kumar, do you mean to say, after, after some discussion, he said, do you mean to say all this time, he's been in the ministry for 37 years as a pastor, he said, do you mean to say, all this time I've been doing the things the wrong way? The wrong way. He's about 65 years old, and I'm a very polite man. I smiled and said, you have never done it the wrong way, but maybe you never done it the right way. Maybe you never did it the right way. My brother, my sister, please listen to me. America, a man like me living in India had never dreamt, never dreamt, that God would want me to come to the U.S. We lived in New Zealand. I had a ministry. I had a public ministry. I, had, I was healing, prophesying, doing all kinds of things. When God told me, move to America, I said, why? Why? I had been visiting America. I've traveled quite a bit in this nation. I used to come here to preach, teach, heal, prophesy. Never even prayed that I should move and live here. The Lord told me, go to America, raise Josephs. Raise Josephs. Who is a Joseph? A man who, who, who proclaimed the harvest. The harvest is not just in terms of grain. The harvest was not just in terms of grain. The harvest was for the whole nation. He impacted every family in the nation. He impacted every family in the nation. He impacted the currency of the nation. The Bible says he took all the money, all the land, all the workforce, and he restructured it. He restructured everything in the nation. He was prophetic. He was apostolic. He was never pathetic. Hallelujah. Yeah, today people claim many things. People claim many things. But the kingdom has to grow. The kingdom has to impact other people. So I really thank God for Pastor Peter. He's allowed me to share 
about the harvest. When we talk about the harvest, immediately we think of souls sitting in some third world, fourth world country. So many ministries in America, they can only impact somebody sitting in Timbuktu. I'm telling you, we don't have the money to bring the missionaries here. Yesterday, I was in San Francisco. I was preaching in a church. A man came and said, he's a missionary, and the church is sending him to a third world country. I told him, go to your pastor. Tell him, you need to be a missionary in your backyard. He smiled and said, the church can't pay me. If the church, if the missionary has to be in the Bay Area, he must be paid at least $5,000 to $6,000 a month. But you send the same man to Timbuktu, you pay $30 a week, and you feel so good about it. Today, whatever I speak, please, I speak to myself also. I will challenge myself. You don't need to agree with me. I always say, please don't agree with me, but don't stop loving me. I told you, my mandate is to go to more than 30 countries in a year. Today I'm here. Tomorrow, me and my wife, we are going to Vancouver. Next week, I'm in Indonesia. The next week, I'm in Australia. And everywhere I go, I talk about bringing back millions of people to the Lord. Bringing back. Last week in Indonesia, six churches were bombed. Six churches. One family. Six members of the family. The youngest was our three or four year old girl. They put the bomb around her and detonated the bomb inside the church. Today, praise God. God's hand is upon this nation. Praise God that there's a safety and a protection. But people like us, we don't see this long term. We don't see this long term. And the signs are there. 22 school shootings. Hello? What do you classify it? So, even tonight, I'm going to speak about the harvest, and I'm going to talk about the sower story, receiving hundredfold. We all know this whole, whole passage. There are two areas, two passages where Jesus talks about the sower. The man put his seeds in four places. Say that, he put his seeds. One more time. He didn't sow at all. He just put his seeds. Why do I say that? He put some seeds in the roadside. He put some seeds in the place where there was thorns and thistles. He put his seeds in a, in a rocky place. If I was standing behind him, I would have told him, I'll kick you on your backside. <laughs> How do you expect a harvest if you throw your seeds just like that? Today, Americans have been more generous in giving, but I don't know whether they know how to sow. Because anything you sow will produce a harvest. The harvest can be anything. If you sow love, the harvest is more love. If you sow forgiveness, the harvest is more forgiveness. If you sow into family, the harvest is more family. If you sow into the anointing, the, the, the harvest is more anointing. If you sow into gifts, the gift has to bring forth more gifts. If you sow finances, there should be finances. If you sow resources, the harvest should be resources. And Jesus said it should be 30, 60, and 100. If you go and tell Jesus, I am retired, he will tell you, I can't retire. Can I still work with you? Because your harvest is 30, 60, and 100. Giving and receiving. There's so much of preaching about giving. And they all promise you, forgive me, I've been watching. They all promise you, you sow into our ministry, you will get that. I asked a preacher, he was sitting with me on the plane. I said, I watch your program, you're promising this. What if people don't receive it? I know you don't have the courage to ask. I'm very different, I don't care at all. He can't throw me out of the plane. He smiled and said, that depends on their faith. He sa I said, you're not saying that. He said, that's a fine print. I said, no, make it big. And then I told him, fine. When you are challenging people to trust you, your anointing, why don't you trust God to make it happen in their life? He smiled and said, I don't have time. Giving and receiving. There was an American 
there was a Russian man, and there was an Indian man. They were talking about how to give to God. Say that, how to give to God. One more time. One more time. So the Americans said, we are the most generous. Americans always say things. So he said, when I give to God, I put a huge circle, a huge circle, a large circle. Then I stand in the circle. I take all my money, everything, and I throw it up. I throw it up. Whatever falls inside the big circle, I give it to God. Whatever falls outside is for myself. Whatever falls inside the large circle. The Russian man said, no, that's not the right way. I draw a small circle. I stand inside the small circle. I take all my money. I throw it up. Whatever falls outside, I give it to God. Whatever falls inside, I take for myself. The Indian said, Indians don't need any circle. So both of them said, no circle at all. He said, no circle. I don't need a circle. I take all my money, I throw it. Whatever God keeps, he keeps. <laughs> Whatever comes down, I take it home. Now, how do you classify it, giving or receiving? Hello. How many of you want to receive? Please, you can go to many nations. I've been part of a church nine years before, before we moved here. The church is a praying church, giving church, but I haven't seen anybody step into their destiny. You know, this man, he's challenged me so much. In that conference, he said, 80% of the people who go to heaven, they have not fulfilled their destiny. You remember that, sir? You remember that? I don't know what you meant, but I went to the Lord and I said, what is people's destiny? What is people's destiny? You can say many things. The anointing, the ministry, the church, the, the gifts, my trips to Quasiland, my trip to Africa. The Lord said, a person's destiny is when he possesses all that I have promised to him. If the person refuses to possess all that I have promised to him, he has not stepped into his destiny. You have to possess before you give it out. You can't give anything which you don't receive. You can't give anything which you don't possess. So the soul story, can you go to the next slide, sir? The next slide. See, there are two versions. Can you put the previous slide? Two versions. Mark 4.20, others like the seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, produce a crop, some 30, some 60, and some 100. There is a Increase. Say that increase. One more time. One more time. The man learned how to work on the increase. There is a diligence. 30, 60, 100. But there's another. There's another man who says, but the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop. 100, 60, and 30. I was really surprised. How could Jesus say two different things? One is a deliberate increase. The other is a deliberate decrease. Today you have to check your life, whether you want to be in the increase or your decrease. The systems of the world, they systematically take you into a decrease. Let me repeat again. The systems of the world, they systematically take you into a decrease. Your job, where will your job take you? Redundancy or retirement? How many of you can escape a retirement? So 40, 45 years, you give your best to a company, knowing fully well that one day you will be retired and your wage will become a pension. How many of you are so happy that from wage you're going to pension? Don't look at me like that. I don't have a job at all. Peter Kumar is unemployable. I landed from him. We are the unemployable kind. Even people in business, a man came and told me, Peter, I got 7% profit this year, 7%. I smiled and said, you lost 93%. 
He said, you must be kidding. I said, I'm not kidding. You're a man, kingdom businessman. Jesus promises hundredfold. Then immediately he said, but everybody does not get hundredfold. I said, you, have you tried? If you depend on the market, the market can put you down. Yeah, people say, oh, America has a crisis. Is there a writing on the sky? America is having a crisis. The market is going up. The market is going down. Please, people like Joseph, they provided the market. They provided it. People like Elijah, people like Elisha, they said, yes, hereby I can restructure the market. The church is called to do that. Can you put the next slide, sir? Understanding harvest. Suppose the number of seeds in your hand. Put your hand out. Everybody, put your hand out. Say, I have seeds. I have seeds. I have seeds. So the potential harvest which is promised is 100 into 100. 10,000. So if your seed is more than 100, you should expect a greater harvest. I'm not talking only money, my brother, my sister. Jesus said, if somebody gives up everything and follow me, Peter asked him. I don't know why Peter always asked the wrong question. <laughs> yeah. Peter asked the wrong question, then he always got the right answers. Jesus said, if anybody gives up everything and follows me, in this, in this life, he will be persecuted for a while. But then he has to receive houses. Then, families. I asked the Lord, am I going to receive that? Everywhere I go, I have families who will receive me. Every country. They treat me like family. They treat me like family. Things should multiply. So this is the promised harvest. Can you put the next slide, sir? So the first set of seeds, wherever it falls, it fell on some place, the yield is nil. So in three places, here is a man who just puts his resources. He puts his money, knowing fully well that he's not going to get anything. Can I hear a hallelujah? I did a business conference in Toronto, and I asked a businessman. I asked him, if you put $1,000 in a company, it can be anything. $1,000 in a company, what do you expect? He said, returns, dividends, debentures, profits, shares. I said, excellent. If you put $1,000 in an offering bag, what do you expect? He said, that depends on the pastor. How many of you know it's very easy to blame the pastor? I like the way you're all looking at me. One day a pastor asked me, Peter Kumar, what's your definition of a good pastor? I said, please, I'm not even looking at you. A good pastor is a good shepherd. He said, amen. I said, he starts feeding the sheep more and more and more. And then the sheep become so hungry, they eat him up. <laughs> See, here is a man who's a loser. I was there. I was there. I had a job, 16 years. I'm an MBA. In India, even now, it's big. I had a very good job for Indian standards. But the Lord said, resign. Resign, because I want to send you to many countries. I told him it's not fair. I'm married. I have two small children. I have two small children. And then I said, I'll fly out on Friday. Saturday, Sunday, I'll do the ministry. Monday, I come and go straight to the office. I thought he'll be very pleased. He told me, Peter Kumar, you're speaking lies to me. I said, I never lied. He said, you're always praying, use me mightily, use me mightily, use me mightily. How can I use you if you're not available? I cried. I told him, please do this to me. One day he said, you have to learn to receive, Peter Kumar. Receive from me. Receive from me. Receive from me. I didn't understand. Because everybody said, do this, do this, do this, do this. I did all that. I remember the first time after I resigned, the first church I preached in India, the offering was 10 Indian rupees. 10 Indian rupees is about 20 cents. 
My salary was here. I couldn't even touch that money. I was shocked. So the pastor's daughter came around. She was a kid. I gave it to her and said, buy something for you. She was very happy. She went there. God told me, why did you do that? I said, what do you mean? He said, you were not generous. You don't know that girl. You just did it. And he said, because it was just 10, 20 cents. If it was $1,000, what would you do? I said, we'll talk later. He said, no, call her, take the money from her. I said, why? I said, don't do this again. Maybe next time. He said, no, you should learn to receive. Only if you're faithful in receiving, you can be faithful in giving. Say that, faithful in receiving. Faithful in receiving. Jesus said, freely receive, freely give. He didn't say, freely give, and then try to receive freely. The next, the next slide, sir. So the promise yield in three places was 7,500. Actual yield was nil. Total loss in three places. God wanted to give, but the man did not know how to receive. I meet so many Christians. As soon as I see them, God says, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this. This weekend I was in a Liberian church. As usual, they, prop they told me to prophesy. Everybody came and said, but Peter Kumar, I am doing this. How will I get that? A lady came and told me, I'm 56 years old, Peter Kumar. Whatever spoke into my life, when I was 18 years, I dreamt that I'm going to have that. But today I'm 56 years. Will I still receive that? I said, go to God. Ask him. Ask him. The Bible says, what the grasshopper ate, what the locust ate, what the can... See, we, we memorize all these promises. We believe. When preachers stand up and say, it's happening to me, we like that. But why shouldn't it happen to me? Why shouldn't it happen to you? If, unless it happens to you. The vision of this church, the vision of this church, every time I come here, God says, I want to fill this church. I'm not talking about a numbers game. This church, this church has to impact this community so much that this community has to come into the church. It's our responsibility. It's a task which God would expect from you and me. You can be a pastor of another church. So good to see you, sir. But when we begin a church, when we are part of a movement, the movement has to accelerate. The next slide, please. Fourth set of seeds, 25 seeds, they fall on good ground. The promised harvest is 2,500. The yield is 30, 60, 100. So work out your personal sowing and reaping. Go home. Please do it. I did it about 15 years back. If you do a little bit of math, 2,500, most of the people who receive, most of us, we receive less than 30. Very few, 60. And maybe 2% of the community of the church go to 100. I constantly challenge my wife. Even yesterday I told her, please listen to me. Please listen to me. Pastor, you need to talk to her. <laughs> give up the trees, give up the demons, try her. She's stronger than both. No, please, she's very generous in gaming. I'm generous. But I told her, unless we receive, unless we receive, Unless we receive. The next slide, sir. Many people of God do not have a revelation about receiving hundredfold. Even seed which fell in good soil failed to bring forth hundredfold. Can you put the book of Genesis, chapter 26, verse 1, sir? Genesis, chapter 26, verse 1. The Bible says... Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
there was a famine. Say that famine, a crisis. In that famine, Abraham knew how to go into multiplication. I don't want to go into the details. If you see the life of Abraham, even when he did wrong things, God made kings so into his life. Twice he said lies about his wife, but the kings were so f afraid of God that they came and gold, gave him gold and silver. Isaac in the same land, he sowed and reaped a hundredfold. God said, I will bless your seed, I will bless your seed, I will bless your seed. But God was not able to bless Jacob at all until Jacob came into Pharaoh's court. Jacob is part of the legacy. There was a famine beside the famine of Abraham and Isaac. These people, they were able to use the famine, use their crisis to produce and provide a harvest. But Joseph, Joseph in, 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 a, in a foreign land, I know Joseph would have cried. He would have cried because God spoke to Abraham. I'm giving you this land. I'm giving you this land. I'm giving you this land. Abraham did not know how to make grain, how to make a harvest in that nation. You know, sometimes I cry. I cry the book of Genesis, chapter 24, verse 34 to 35. Genesis chapter 24, verse 34 and 35. The Bible talks about the blessings Abraham received. The, the Lord has blessed my master abundantly. He has become wealthy. He has given him sheep, cattle, silver, gold, men servants and maid servants, camels and donkeys, no grain at all. God gave him the land. God told him, wherever you walk, I'm going to give it to you. Maybe he was so rich. He was so rich. But Isaac would have said, my dad missed out the harvest. My dad missed out the harvest. Now, some of you may not understand. I preach in a church in Houston. So it's an Indian church, and the pastor is a young guy, 42, 43 years old. His name is Pastor Gideon. So after I preached, two Indian prophets, they were mighty prophets in my, in my age. Today, one of them is nearly 85, 86. The other person is about 84. When I was about 18, 19 years old, these people used to draw multitudes in India, supernatural, prophetic, profound, profound people. One of them is here in America on a benefit. Doesn't have any income, doesn't have any ministry. The other person came from another country, absolutely broke. So both of them were walking toward the car, and I was standing, and this pastor asked me, Peter Kumar, these two people were legends. They were in the ministry for about 60, 65 years, very faithful. What is their harvest? What is their harvest? It was as if somebody slapped me on my side. Are they faithful? Yes. Are they anointed? Yes. Are they, are they still doing the ministry? Yes. But in, are they doing the ministry in the way God had called them? No. 85 years, 87 years. And the man squeezed my hand and said, I don't want to lose my, my harvest, Peter Kumar. And I told the Lord, I don't want to lose my harvest. My destiny is to see millions of Americans turn to the Lord. You're shocked. You can pray about it. But I'm stepping into cities. I'm stepping into cities. God has shown me a few cities in America. In America. Charlotte. This is a place where there is an uprise of the prophetic. But I told the Lord, what is the use of just the prophetic rising up, rising up, rising up without reaching the harvest? Glorious churches are here. Everybody is saying, harvest, harvest. Where is the harvest? Where? Show me. There are a few cities I'm systematically visiting. And the churches which I'm connecting, they're all talking harvest. Some of them 20 years, 30 years. 
And I'm telling them financially, some of them don't have the resources. Some of them have the resources. They don't know how to employ the resources. They're employing all the resources in faraway places. And when I tell them, do it in your backyard, they say, no, 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 Peter Kumar, we have to go to Haiti. We have to go to Mexico. We have to go to Cambodia. Why? Do it here and then do it there. Do it here and do it there. We have to be wise, my brother, my sister. We have to be wise. Can you put the next slide, sir? Can you put the next slide? Go on. Before sowing, say that before sowing. Now, why I'm saying before sowing, I don't have all the time. Sowing is purposeful. The purpose is to receive a harvest. Charity is not sowing. Don't get shocked. Charity is to get a tax exemption. Hallelujah. If you don't get a tax exemption, I don't know how many of you, how many of you, even me. There is a question. I lived in New Zealand where there's 100% tax exemption. People will come and give me a thing. They'll ask me first, do you have a tax exemption? Yes. Then I will give. Sometimes the check is so minimal, I used to think, what tax exemption you'll get? Let's say $5. We have to be different. I used to teach churches, don't do automatic payment. Don't do, because through your tithe, if God opens the windows of heaven, and if your church, if, you, if your house overflows, then your church will overflow. If your house overflows, then your tithe has to overflow. So when you do an automatic payment, that means you're telling, I don't want to overflow. Hallelujah. So define your land. What is your land? Every opportunity, every person, every opportunity, every person, every talent, every spiritual gift, all these things have to be employed. Pastor said he's an artist. Yes, he doesn't need to draw. He doesn't do it to sell. But he's using his talent. Five talents should become ten. The reward is ten cities. Today, we don't receive that kind of teaching. If a church needs to impact a city, then every talent in the church should be employed both in the church and outside the church. In the church and outside the church. There was a young man who was madly in love with this girl. He never had a job, never had a house, never had a car, nothing, but the girl loved him. He always said, you're the only one I have. You're the only one I have. You're the only one. The girl did not believe. The girl did not understand. But after they got married, suddenly she said, I thought you're going to get a house. I thought you're going to take a job. I thought you're going to invest somewhere. He said, honey, I don't know. I don't have anything. I don't have anything. So she said, maybe you lied to me. Maybe you lied to me. She said, I never speak lies because I always said, you're the only one I have. You're the only one I have. You're the only one. Some of us are so committed to the Lord. I hear preachers say, people pray, I'm so intimate with the Lord. But if you're so intimate with the Lord, what is the transfer? You work so hard. There should be two sources of your blessings. Say the two sources. One more time. One more time. A worldly source and a godly source. The worldly source can take you to a decrease. But if you create a godly overflow using your spiritual gift, using your talents, a godly source, when you create an overflow through the godly source, even though there's a decrease in the worldly source, your godly source will take you to your destiny. You have to understand. Because your worldly source can constantly be challenged. Constantly be challenged. But you have to learn to make your worldly source multiply. Even though you may not have a great job. Even though you are retired. Even though you are not greatly talented. 
Your faith should produce reward. Your faith will not produce wages. Define your labor. How long can you work? How long can you work? How long will people let you work? Your labor will give you wage. The value is designed by somebody else. God says, I will make you kings and priests. But your company will say, just go sit in that chair. Many of us, we don't understand. I hear preachers preach, oh, we are, we are adorned in royal garments. I don't see that in churches. We are priests, we are a chosen generation, we have to be above, we, we cannot be below. I mean, from a pulpit, anybody can say. Anybody can say. But I want to be there in a place where millions would come back. If millions need to come back, millions has to be employed. You don't need to run after money. Money has to run after us. The anointing draws. The anointing makes the transfer. Define your seeds before sowing. James says a farmer will not sow if he does not expect a reward. The farmer will not sow if he doesn't expect a reward. Every time you sow, you can do charity. You should support mission. You should support orphans. You should do so many things. But unless you create a harvest every time, offering, the Bible says, if you give your offering, men will come and pour into your lap. Every time you give an offering, men has to come and pour into your lap. Why should we not expect it? This is not for the people of the world. If I fail to receive, somebody else will take the harvest. Jesus said, the enemy's house is a strong man's house. It is full of blessings. From where did he get it? He stole from you and me. He stole from you and me. Whatever we refuse to possess, he takes it. Whatever you refuse to possess. There was a man called Daniel. The Bible says, as soon as he started praying, God released the blessing. But 21 days he's fasting and praying and screaming and speaking in tongues. The angel came and said, just shut up, man, just shut up. Somebody took it away. And because it was you, God sent me to go and fight with the guy. I had to fight. I'm bringing it back to you. Next time, don't do that because I won't go. I don't want to be a loser. Define your reaping, 30, 60, and 100. Now he who supplies seed to the sower, bread for the food, will also supply. Sister, can you start playing the keyboard? Listen, guys, listen. You may ask me, so Peter Kumar, I've heard all this. You know, every time I read the passage, I used to cry. I used to cry. Can you blame the sower? You can, because he had a good heart. He threw his seeds. Can you sow the, can you sow the land? I mean, who cares? The land doesn't care. The land doesn't care. The birds came and picked it up. You can give a spiritual meaning for that. 20,000 demons were waiting to come and pick it up. Who cares? You think the birds will care? The demons will care? But one day the Lord asked me, so Peter Kumar, somebody can sow, somebody can water, I can only make it grow. And he told me, how could this man not work on that land? If the man knew that land had thorns and thistles, before he sowed, say that before I sow, one more time, one more time, he could have cleared the thorns and thistles. This is common sense. I would have provided a hundredfold. If it was a rocky place. I mean, you can spiritualize it. A hard heart, your mother-in-law's heart, your husband's heart, your boss's heart. Nobody cares. If the man would have worked on that soil, tried to break it, then all the other three lands 
but have also been good soil. Good soil. Today he said, the Lord told me, many Christians, many of my people, they expect me to do everything, Peter Kumar. I can't. I can't. I've given them wisdom. I've given them wisdom. They have to employ their wisdom. They have to work on it. A man called Job. Very, very rich because he was a godly man. If you read his account, loss after loss after loss after loss. The very place where everything was multiplying, now loss is multiplying. Where blessings were multiplying. If you are not, if you don't, if you don't wake up, losses will catch up so quickly. In one day he lost everything. The Lord asked me, when he began to lose, why couldn't he wake up? Why couldn't we wake up? I said, but you sent Satan. You told Satan. To... The Lord said, shut up. He should know his enemy. He should know how to put down the enemy. I, 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 I moved the hedge because I thought he was strong. I thought he had wisdom. I thought he had the anointing to put down the works of the enemy. I boasted about him to Satan. I boasted. I said, look at Job let me down. And the Bible says, God had to break his captivity. He lost everything in chapter 1. He could not take back any of his losses till chapter 42. 42 passages of his life. 42 milestones of his life. The guy never attempted to take back any loss. And he never received any new blessing. You can spiritualize it. You can spiritualize it. I don't want to spiritualize it. My brother, my sister, what will make millions come to the Lord? What will make thousands come into a church? The power of increase. The moment Joseph had the grain, the whole nation lined up. The moment David put down Goliath, the nation woke up because they got accustomed to plunder. Plunder. David fought 66 wars. Every war there was a plunder. And then from the plunder he gave generously to the building of the temple. Moses said, tomorrow I'm transferring it. I'm transferring resources. Why? Not to make the church rich, but we need to build the tabernacle. The tabernacle was not built through people's labor. The tabernacle was built by the transfer. God is not a fool. God didn't say, tell your people to save some money, two pennies, two dollars, two hundred dollars, and ask them to give generously. No. I stand with you, sir, when you call forth for millions, not to become rich. He can know. He, he can become rich. So many preachers become so rich. This church is different. Even now, I asked Gita when we were coming, why do you love this church? He said, I don't know, but I love this church because this church is different. Revelation, people. We are loved in this church. I'm telling you, we went to some churches, nobody even spoke to me. Nobody spoke to her. And then they prophesied to me saying, I've left my wife, I'm living with somebody else. She walked up to a person and said, how come you never picked up? My husband is in the ministry for many years. That church is extreme prophetic. Hallelujah. But we've been through. I'm not here to judge anything. So what am I carrying from here, my brother, my sister? A revelation. A revelation. Every time I talk to pastor, I say, Charlotte. Charlotte. Prophetic is here. Harvest is here. The prophetic has to come down. It has to come down to create say that to create when the things are created it will provide say that it will provide when it provides then it becomes a task everybody's task everybody's task praying for the harvest easiest thing seeing a harvest and declaring everybody is seeing and seeing and seeing very easy 
making it happen it is now i want everybody to stand up i want everybody to stand up put your hand on your heart tell the lord trust me trust me trust me my destiny is to receive everything you have shown me from today i will employ my faith my anointing my gifting my relationships into the task teach me to create the overflow the overflow should happen in my house from the house into the church from the church into the community from my house into the church from my church into the community this is my task this is my city these are my people i'm willing to possess my harvest can we all give a clap offering to the lord